Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode in the Spigot series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do cooldowns on commands. This has been a suggestion for a long time, so people have been asking how to do cooldowns on command so that whenever you type a command, you cannot directly retype the command right after because you have to wait a little bit before you can do the command again. So let me show you the final product that you're going to be able to make after watching this episode. So the command is slash fart, and then when you type fart, it's gonna say you farted, oopsies, and then you type it again. It says you can't fart again for another however long. It just happens to be milliseconds. You can change it to, of course, however long, like minutes or seconds, whatever you wanna, do it as but that's just to illustrate um more precisely how long it takes so see as you type it you can see that the amount of milliseconds goes down because it's counting down and then once once it reaches the amount you can rerun the command and boom so it says you fart oopsies and then it resets it and you can apply this to any of the commands that you may have in your plugins and uh it's really cool so let's jump into intellij now to see how we can do this uh. I'm going to make the plugin on 1.17 on Java 16, but it'll work on any version of Minecraft. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I got my plugin created here. Let me just close all this crap and then open up the source, main, Java. And we're going to make a new test command so we can test out this feature. So fart command. And what we're going to do inside of here is just make a regular command first. And so it implements command executor. Boom, boom, boom. Return true. So this is the basic template we always do. And then it's also just check to see if it's a player running it. So if sender instance of player, then we'll run the command, boom. All right, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna need a way to track which players are on the cooldown currently and how long they have been on the cooldown, right? So that way we know if they're allowed to run the command or not. Hopefully you're familiar with hash maps and maps in Java, but if you're not, it's simply a type of data structure that ha has a key value pair. So the key is how you identify it essentially. So the key for this will be a UUID of a player and the value is the thing that you're storing associated with that key. So that's gonna be in this case a long, so a big number. And so let's import UUID by the way, import class, there we go. And so this will just call, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna just call it cooldown. Okay, so private final hash map cooldown and it's red because it's final. So that means that you have to initialize it. So we're gonna make a constructor for this class. So public fart command doesn't need any parameters. And then inside of here, we're gonna do this.cooldown is equal to new hash map. So we're just uh, you know making a new instance of the hash map. So the way that this hash map will work, essentially, like I said, it's gonna keep track of which players are on the cooldown, and then long is gonna keep track of when they ran the command last, okay? So the key is equal to the UUID of the player, and the value or the long is equal to the epoch time, epoch time of when they ran the command, all right? And the epoch time is the amount of milliseconds since January 1979 or something like that. Um, it's just like a standard way of keeping track of time in Java and other programming languages, okay? So if they're not on the hash map currently, this means they have never run the command while the plugin was started. So we'll just add them to the hash map and then also add when they ran it. So then we, we can run it. So let's first do that part. We'll say if, so we'll do this dot cooldowns, cooldown contains key. So the key is how we identify the person stored in the hash map. And we'll do, uh, we need an instance of player, don't we? So we'll do player, player is equal to player sender. Just casting sender into player like we always do. So we're gonna do player dot get unique ID because that's uh, what it's storing here as the key, UUID. That's giving you the UUID. So if the UUID is in it, and then we're gonna negate this so we can say if they're not in the hash map currently, this means that they're not, they have not ran the command. So then we'll run it. So we'll say, um, first of all, we wanna add them to the hash map since they're actually running it now. So this.cooldown.put, put put is how you add something to a hash map. And we need a key and we need a value. So the key is gonna be, again, the UID of the player. So get a unique ID. And the long is gonna be the epoch time of when they ran the command, so right now. And the easiest way to obtain that is to do system, sys System dot current time milliseconds and that will return the epoch time of when they ran the command Okay as a long and then after that we'll just run the actual code of the command which in this case is just a simple message But of course realistically if you're doing like an actual plugin not like a test plugin like this You can have as much code as you need right so say you farted Oopsies there we go. And you can color if you want to so so far this lets you run the command if they are not in the hash map currently Otherwise, if they are in the hash map, it's not gonna do anything. So we wanna continue checking to see 
some stuff. So first, um, if they are in the hash map, this means that they have ran the command at some point. So we want to check the long, the value stored there to see if it has been 10 seconds or however long since they last ran the command, right? So let's go ahead and find the time elapsed since the last time they ran the command. So to do that, so to do that, we're going to do long time elapsed is equal to system dot current time millisecond. So the time right now minus the time inside the hash map for that player. So to get that, we'll do cooldown dot get and then pass in player dot get unique ID. And that's going to give you a long, the one that we stored previously here. And so when you find the difference between the current time and the previous time, that's going to give you the difference in time in milliseconds. So this will be in millisecond difference in milliseconds. So with that, you can you can convert it to seconds if you want to or whatever, you know, unit of time you want to use. And uh, so then we're going to see if time elapsed is greater than or equal to 10,000. This means that at least 10 seconds have passed because 10,000 that's 10,000 milliseconds. So 10,000 milliseconds is the same as saying 10 seconds. Okay, so 10 seconds. And of course, realistically, in a real plugin, you may want to add something to the config.yml that lets the plugin owner configure how long, you know, the cooldown should be. But this number here signifies the amount of time that the cooldown will be, okay? It's 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds. So if 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds has elapsed, this means that we can allow them to run the command again because the cooldown has passed. So, so we'll say uh, player.send message, you farted, oopsies, awesome. And then we need to update their uh, long here in the hash map. So we know they're in the hash map currently, so we don't need to re-add them. Like right here, we put them into the hash map, but since they're already in the hash map, all we have to do is update it now, okay? And the reason we have to update is because of course, um, this is no longer gonna be the correct one anymore. We have to change it to now the correct time, the current time of when they ran the command, which is system dot uh, current time milliseconds. And to update a value within a hash map, you can actually just call the, the put method again. Even though we already have a key with that player's UUID within the hash map, it'll just update it automatically. It's not going to add a duplicated one, obviously. So it's smart enough to make sure to update it rather than adding a new one. So this dot cooldown dot put, and then we're going to do player dot get unique ID, and then the system dot current time milliseconds. There we go. So that's when they ran the command. So now that's updated. So next time they run the command, it'll check it all over again to see how much time has elapsed. And if 10 seconds has not elapsed, it won't allow them to run it. In this case, um, if the 10 seconds has not elapsed, we're going to send them a message saying that 10 seconds has not elapsed. Um, we'll actually just say what we said in the example. So you can't fart again for, oops, again for another. And we'll say, uh, we'll do uh, 10,000, which is 10 seconds minus the time elapsed. So that will give you how much time is left over for them to wait. You can't fart again for another milliseconds. There you go. And the reason we're just keeping it as milliseconds is just to show that the time is actually changing. Um, of course, realistically, in a real plugin, you would want to do it. You would want to send the message and just say like seconds because that's more understandable for the everyday player, right? All right, so this should be it, all we need. Um, I'll, I'll recap this in a second, but first let's just test it out so I can prove to you that it works. So before we do that, though, we need to register it, of course. So uh, git command dot or farts dot set executor new fart command. And there we go. And then in the plugin.yml, commands fart, oopsies, I did a stinky. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this and compile this and put it into the server, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm on the server now, so we're going to do slash fart. And it says you farted, oopsies, so we're going to run it again. And now every time we run it, we can see that the amount of milliseconds that have that we need to wait is going down because the uh, because the time elapse is changing every time you run it, of course, because it's being recalculated based on the current time milliseconds. All right, so it's uh, so pretty simple. Now you can apply this to all of your commands that need cooldowns. Uh, I'm going to show you in a second how you can make this code more concise and more efficient looking, because um, currently it's kind of a mess. We're doing a little bit of code duplication. But first, I'll give you a quick recap, like I said. So here we got our fart command. Inside of that, we have a hash map, which helps us keep track of when each player last ran the command, and that's going to be represented as a long, which is represented as the epoch time when they ran the command. And uh, so if you already are familiar with hash maps, this is probably really easy for you. If not, then look up a quick hash map tutorial on the interwebs. I have one out there, but uh, yeah, they're pretty simple. They're just a way to have key value pairs stored within memory. 
Um, so yeah, when the player runs the command, we're going to see if they're already in the hash map. If they're not, that means that they have not ran the command yet. So we're going to add them to the hash map and then also add when they ran the command by doing system.currentTimeMilliseconds. And then we're going to run the command, which in this case is just a simple uh, send message method. Otherwise, if they are already in the hash map, this means they did run the command at some point while the plugin was started. So we're going to check to see the time elapsed, right? Because the whole point of a cooldown is to wait for a certain amount of time to pass before they can run it again. So we're going to get the turn. So we're going to get the current time of milliseconds and then subtract it by the time at which they last ran the command. And the difference will be how much time has elapsed. So in this case, if at least 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds has elapsed, this means that they can run the command again. So we're going to update the value within the hash map and then we'll send them a message here. Otherwise, if 10 seconds has not elapsed, we'll tell them you can't fart again for another however long milliseconds just by doing some quick maths right there. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Hopefully you found this informative. It's a pretty efficient way of doing things, I think. Um, other ways of doing it would be using uh, like a schedule, like a bucket runnable to every second, you know, just check to see when they last ran the command and stuff like that. But I think that's kind of too... I think that's too much just for something so simple. Just adding them to a simple hash map that you have, you know, locally within your class here for the command is really sufficient, I think. Let me show you real quick how you can make this more efficient. So currently we're doing some code duplication. We're running the same code here twice, which is very uh, naughty. So you could cut this and add it to a method. So you can just call the method each time instead of rerunning the same code. So at this point it's checking to see if they're in the hash map. So we're gonna add or here. So if it reaches beyond the or here, it's gonna, that means that they are in the hash map. So we can just cut this to get the time elapsed and say if the time elapsed is greater than or equal to 10,000 or whatever the value is that you want to set, then you can run the code inside of here, right? And then we could take this, you can't fart again for another however long mini, uh, milliseconds and just replace it right here and just take the time elapsed and just replace it here with this, boom. So now we're doing the same exact thing except that you're just reworking the if statements a little bit to make it uh, more concise because there's really no point in doing all that. But anyway, hopefully this video was informative. Uh, cooldowns, like I said, is something that people have been wanting to see for a long time because it's kind of a tricky thing if you're not familiar with hash maps or if you're newer to uh, Minecraft's plugin development. So if this was informative and it helped you out, then please leave a like below and let me know what else you guys want to see to help you out with your plugin coding, all right? All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, if you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more. Subscribe and peace.